Hey guys, we're back again. And now we're going to move on to the quiz part of the quiz. Now, what's going on with the quiz? Now, for our test, we're actually going to do five questions. How this setup will be is we really don't have a limit of how many questions we can do, but we only have five questions. So in the quiz, we need to make the actual class. So class, quiz. Now, the reason I tell you the five questions is just so you know how it's going to go. So now we need to make a list. So let's just uh, make a, va a private var question. Question list. Now this is going to be equivalent to a list of questions. Now what else do we need? Well, we need to have a private var of current questions. And that's going to be equal to an int. A private var of total questions. Which actually is not needed. Even though you think our current questions, total questions, the total question is actually going to be the count. And current question is going to be starting on one, and it's going to be added every time. Now, what do we do next? We have the question, we have the current question. Do we need anything else? Do we need to hold an answer? Well, no, those are in the questions. Do we need to hold the question data? Well, no, not that either. Really, the only thing we need is actually functions after this. So, the first function, of course, is going to be the initializer, and that's going to set current uh, question. It's going to be equal to zero. And we could make it where you could privately set all the questions. But we're not going to do that for this one. Um, no, all we're going to do is... Question dot init. And not that init. This init. And we're going to do this init five times. So command C. B, B, uh, and Z. That's just how the placement of it all goes in. Bam. Bam. And one last one. And that last one we can get rid of them. So the question. Let's start with what is 2 plus 2? Uh, fairly simple. Okay. What is the capital of Indiana? Uh, you can't forget those question marks. They are questions. Okay. What, what, what could we ask next? Now it could be fun. Or we could add another math question, which would make these a little bit easier just for testing. What is 2 times 2? How, how many fingers does a hand have? And then one last question to ask. What came what came first, the chicken chicken or the egg? And um, the actual answer for this one really quickly is the egg. Because for something to 
make the chicken, they would have to have made the egg first for it to develop into a chicken. Um, that's just putting the egg in there. So what's the answer to this one? Four. What's the answer to this one? In Vienna. Polis. Uh, what's the answer to this one? Four again. And how, how many fingers does a hand have? The answer is four because the thumb is an appendage, but not a finger. So we can make this one five, 10, four, so we have the correct answer. And let's just say zero. And then let's pick the fourth one right this time. So we got the egg. Okay. Chicken. Me. And then the last one is the rooster. Four, five, two, and zero for addition. And then just to make sure, I this, in case I did misspell this one, make the first one. So we have two uh, correct answers being at four. So far have another correct answer. Okay, we need, we need to actually have this, this one five. Four, five, two, let's make this one three the answer. Make this one then the answer at four, four, six, eight, three. In Indianapolis, let's say, um, Michigan. City, a cheeky one, Indiana, and then finally, New York. We have our five questions. We now have them set up. Well, would we ever give away all the questions? Well, no, we really wouldn't. We wouldn't need to. But... Now we get to what we're missing. How do we know how many we have correct so far? Well, fairly easily. Correct count. Making another end. And then we can also make an in correct count. Make that an end as well. Let's we'll set these with that one. So correct count equals zero. In correct count equals zero. Now, once we do so we've only been doing classes. If we did make a structure, and show you this. So, if you made a struct quiz two, and we had, say, two variables, so var one, and then var two, and then var three, it's going to say it's wrong because it's not going to like that. Four structures, we have to put them in order. So it has to be one, two, three. It could not be three, two, one. But with classes, the only thing that has to be in order is as you see in the net over here, is it has to follow the order as they're being assigned for their labels. So it is similar in initialization, but the initialization is you get a custom set. So if they're, you can move around the variable actual initialization phase a little bit smoother, but the structures you're locked into that, init that exact initialization setup based on how the vars appear. So let's move on. So what functions do we need to do? Well, let's uh, do one function. We need to... Uh, um, give current question. Now this one is going to have the current question and it's going to return a question.
No, we have various things we can do with that. But giving the current question means that we give them the current question and then they do the operation based on the question. So with that, they can check whether or not the question is wrong, right? They can give the choices. We don't have to give the choices. We don't have to do the check answer. And we don't have to give the question. Because what do we do with the give question? Well, we just give them the question, um, which is going to be a little confusing and a little bit in concept. But current question, bam. Now, if you want just the question, not the question object, just the question, you actually have to call give question dot give question that will then return a string. Or the easier way we're going to handle this is we're going to throw that question into a temporary variable, but that's later on. We have function give current question. Uh, what do we what do we need next? Well, we have that function give current question. We need to. What do we need to do? We don't need to check answer. We need to function input answer. And this is going to be kind of weird because of how we had it have it set up there. We're going to run that. So we're going to end up with the answer and then move to next question. Now, input answer, what are we going to do? If input, now, since it's a Boolean already, input will actually, no, yeah, I need to be Boolean. Got a little ahead of myself there. A little ahead of myself. Okay, because that's already a Boolean, we can just put input in. And what we can do is we can do the correct count plus equals one or incorrect count plus equals one. What it's going to do is going to take whatever the value of correct count is and plus one to it and set that as correct count. Same for incorrect count. So what this is saying is we if we're going to input our answer of either true or false. So if the answer is true, it's going to give us plus one to our correct count. If not false. Now, currently how we set up, we're putting some handling strain over on the controller. Um, for giving a basic example of how to handle stuff, this is just to make it a little bit easier. Um, really what you'd want is to have an overhead program on top of all of this. So a third overhead program that runs the quiz and questions in tandem and does these very simple operations like run this or that. We'll be handling it in the controllers for now. Later on, if we make a tutorial for a more advanced quiz, I will make a handler. But that one, it'll be more needed because we'll be doing multiple quiz types, multiple question types. But for now, so we're doing this, trying to make this very simple to understand. We're going to be keeping it a little bit simpler in coding schema. So we'll move to the next question. Well, we don't need an input for that, but what we do need to give is to give. Well, we don't need. No, we already have give current question. Um, we're actually following the one method type of it does exactly one thing. They're going to call move to next question, and then they're going to call give current question to get the next question. So move to the next question is. So now we need to know a way if it's done. Hmm, let's actually return a Boolean. No, there's a reason for this. No, here's the thing. If current question is equivalent to questionless.count minus one, 
we're immediately returning a false. Don't move to next question. In fact, what this going to tell it to do is to move to the end state. We already have all the values we need. Else, current question plus equal one. And then we're going to return true. That we have moved to another question. We have moved the question along. So again, this starts at zero and it moves it along. So what this basically makes it so we end on the correct timing for our questions. Now what we need to do is function give total question count. Again, we don't take anything, but we're going to be giving out an int. And all this is going to do is return question list dot count. That get, tells you how many total questions there are. Function give current question value. Again, another int. And then this is going to be equal to current question plus one. Now the reason we're doing that is just because whenever you're handling this, you're handling this to be more of a human perception. So what is the current question value? Well, it is the current question plus one because the array is different than how we normally perceive things to be. If you get, hand someone a piece of code and it says this is the zeroth out of 10 questions, they're gonna be confused because you gave them a question that's automatically one. So let's go over and review what we have so far. We have a question list, we have a current question, a correct count, and an incorrect count. You get back a current question, a correct count, an incorrect count, a question list. Give current question returns a question list of the current question. Um, you can function input answer as an input's a boolean if input is correct. Correct count plus equal one, else an incorrect count plus equal to one. Then we can move on to the next question of boolean if current question equals question list dot count minus one, else current question. Now the reason we have this is just an I. We don't need the incorrect count. It just it's fun to put that up there. The one thing that incorrect count could be used for is, is say you want to make this simulate an SAT study guide. Well, if you have an SAT, if you get something wrong, you lose a quarter of a point. So then, well, why wouldn't we have it set up? I think it's either a quarter point or you lose one point and gain four points. I, I've, it's been a while. But the whole concept is that it allows us to have that ability. But currently, um, we're not going to be giving that. And all the other math can be done because we have given everything that they need to know, which is current question value and total questions. But we also need to give correct count as the final thing. So let's give me that. That's good. Give correct count. And finally, you return the int. And you return the correct count. That should be good for all of our quiz. We don't need any additionals now. So what are we going to do next? Well, next we're going to move on to the storyboards themselves. And the reason we're moving on to storyboards is that's the natural progression. You now have seen Swift. Well, the next thing you need to know is understand how to make these different systems to present the app. So next video is going to be going into these storyboards. So then I will go ahead and see you guys then.